Hello everyone and welcome back to the Hammered Corner. In today's video, I'll be giving you some history behind the Tower Mint in London. But just before we get into it, be sure to drop a like on the video and subscribe for weekly videos every Saturday morning. So if you're new to the numismatic hobby, then you will very quickly become aware of the extremely popular Tower Mint that was in operation for over 500 years. In 1279, William de Tournemere was appointed Master Moneyer for England. He had come from France with a new approach to casting the molten metal in strips rather than sheets and boiled the blanks in acid to remove their silvery surface. The Royal Mint was at the time in the Treasury and the Exchequer buildings but becoming large and industrial. In 1300 it was moved within the Tower of London into a 400 feet long purpose built mint facility between the inner and outer walls of the tower. By the middle of the century Almost all minting in England was done there. And by that time, the Royal Mint was producing coins in both gold and silver, their value being tied to the amount of metal they contained. Edward I, who reigned from 1272 to 1307, installed the mint within the safety of the tower walls in circa 1279, where it stayed until 1810. Most of the coins of the realm were made there in a dedicated area that became known as Mint Street. The role of the moneyer was evolving into the company of moneyers who claimed the sole right of striking coins. However, the quantities of bullion to be coined and the arrangement for the actual coining were now a matter between the king and the master of the mint. Making coins was hot, noisy and dangerous. Tampering with coins was treason and the threat of horrific punishment deterred most, if not all thieves and forgers. The making of coins was rather a different business from usual activities at the tower. Mint staff were kept separate from the rest of the community within the fortress, and their comings and goings were strictly monitored. The mint operated from a series of closely guarded temporary workshops and more permanent factory buildings in the outer ward, which became known as the Mint Street. In the early years of operation, workers at the mint were at high risk of injury, being surrounded by dirt whilst performing dangerous work and it was not uncommon for workers to lose fingers or eyes. By the 1550s, ecclesiastic mints were discontinued and regional mints were only resorted to in times of special need. In Europe, the age-old technique of striking coins with a handheld hammer was being challenged by a screw press and horse-drawn mills were being employed for preparing the metal. The result was rounder, thicker and more consistent coinage. This had a great advantage over the old hammered coins as it made it more difficult to cut small pieces of silver or gold from the edges of the coins and then put them back into circulation. A widespread practice called clipping. But it's deactivated the Royal because Mint obviously you need a section by the fire and stuff. And I got a flintlock pistol from about 1780. So you just got like a collection of history items. It's just bits. Yeah, it's just bits. Oh, I don't press. Interest in the effort was so great that Queen Elizabeth I visited the tower to examine the work in early July that year. The coins were better produced, but the technique was slower and was rejected by a company of moneyers. A second attempt was made in 1625 when another Frenchman, Nicholas Bryo, came to London. His efforts were too rejected, but he was sent to Scotland to work at the Edinburgh Mint with eventual success. And by 1696, the Royal Mint was charged with recoining all old silver in circulation in Great Britain, known as the Great Recoinage. This included large amounts of hammered silver, much of it now very worn and clipped. Although now working with good mills and screw presses, this task was too great for the single mint. Branch mints were therefore established at Bristol, Chester, Exeter, Norwich. Each mint distinguished on every coin by an additional mint mark in the form of the first letter of the name of the city where the mint was operating. Coins with a B were from Bristol, etc. In addition, coins made from freshly mined silver were marked to indicate where silver came from. Roses on the reverse indicated silver from the mines of west of England, while plumes indicated Welsh mines. So the London Mint was in operation for over 1100 years, founded in 886 AD and the mint was within the tower walls for over 500 years. And in 1810, the mint was closed. Now, I hope you've enjoyed a bit of a backstory to the Tower Mint in London. 
and I can't believe Christmas is almost upon us. And after Christmas, I've almost been on this channel for one year already. So I'd just like to thank every single one of you for all of your support, your kind comments, your likes and your suggestions, as I couldn't have made this channel without you all. So be sure to let me know in the comments what coins you've got that were minted from the Tower Mint within this time frame. So thank you all for watching, and as always, keep collecting!